open source. Welcome to our workshop on uh, open source space mission design tools uh, from the Izmir University of Economics in Izmir, Turkey on a beautiful, more beautiful day, on a, on a better day in terms of weather. And uh, I hope that you are all well. Uh, we're gonna start now open up to uh, student projects. Uh, there are gonna be three of these projects and I will introduce Yaiz Akan, Denise Lena Demirba, Hazal Karaller and Eli Damajit, uh, who are uh, in their final semester at our university. Uh, and for the professionals who are involved, uh, such as Eric from uh, Goddard, uh, you're gonna see that they use some tools. Uh, 42 is just becoming part of the workflow for us. So anything that later you could comment, Eric, about how they could employ 42 in what you see that they are trying to do would be most appreciated by them, I'm sure. So with that in mind, uh, I'll hand it over to, you know, every group has a coordinator. And for this uh, group, it's Hazal Karaliler. Uh, uh, I will give it to the, to the coordinator and then the coordinator decides who goes on and speaks. So go ahead, Hazal. Uh, can you see my screen, sir? Yes, uh, but I don't see you. Uh, I can show myself. <laughs> that would be lovely. Keep, it, keep in mind, students, that, uh, uh, foreign uh, foreign speakers cannot tell if Azal is a boy or a girl, for instance. So it's important to be known. All right. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Azal. I'm a senior ice space engineering and mechatronics engineering student at Izmir University of Economics. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here uh, with such valuable people. And I would like to thank uh, to Dr. Pinto for organizing this event. Today, my teammates and I are going to briefly present our um, final year project supervised by uh, Dr. Pinto. Um, traveling to distant asteroids require innovative technologies in the sense of propulsion, tracking, and maneuvering. Uh, since the spacecraft voyages through deep space, it cannot completely count on ground based navigation systems, and it needs to have an onboard autonomous navigation system to steer itself. Another solid reason to develop an uh, autonomous navigation technology is the overuse of the deep space network, which, which has um, started to ripen, thus may not be able to deliver as before. Likewise, the propulsion technology needs to be reformed according to the needs of missions, and solar sailing has branched out in that sense, providing a potential to improve space travel without carrying any conventional um, propulsion system, but utilizing radiation pressure produced by the sun. Um, accordingly, our project intends to prove the concept of a solar sail propelled spacecraft with an autonomous um, optical and inertial navigation system during interplanet emissions by using a medium that um, analyzes the image by identifying celestial objects and processes it to operate um, navigation procedures, eventually to estimate the spacecraft's current um, position and velocity. Introducing two um, navigation methods being optical and inertial navigation. Um, the optical navigation system is an image-based measuring method collaborating with uh, possibly an inertial navigation system and uh, the deep space network, which acquires the needed data from the uh, attached cameras on the spacecraft and ephemeris information. Um, cameras are responsible for uh, providing photographs of a celestial body placed against a star whose coordinates are known, then processing this image and determining the trigonometric relationship um, parallax between the spacecraft and the celestial object produces an optical correlation to be um, used in navigation. Um, an inertial navigation system can be expressed as a method to obtain the current orientation and velocity of the object relative uh, to a reference point using the onboard accelerometers and gyroscopes. Now, um, Yils will proceed. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Yils and I am an aerospace engineering student at Izmir University of Economics, and I am going to talk about Deep Space One mission and new technologies tested and used it used during the mission and lastly the workflow block diagram prepared by us and uh, on autonomous navigation. In 1998, Deep Space One became the first spacecraft launched uh, under the new planning program. The purpose of this program was to develop and certify new high-risk technologies for use in future low cost science mission. Deep Space One tested 12 new technologies and some of them were autonomous onboard optical navigation, miniature integrated camera and spectrometer and solar electric ion propulsion system. 
which can be classified as the most important ones uh, for that mission. Uh, the, the photo we see on the left is the comet Borelli taken by the Deep Space One using miniature integrated camera and spectrometer, which is the highest quality comet, comet photo ever. But for the Braille, conditions were not ideal due, due to technical difficult, difficulties, including a software issue. The vehicle instead passed within 26 kilometers uh, of the comet Braille. Moving, mo moving uh, on with a conceptual block diagram for the workflow of the autonomous optical and inertial navigation systems. This system utilizes a camera as an imaging sensor to capture the objects present in the environment. Then identifying the information of the observed starts using a star catalog. The position of the celestial objects is determined with the help of ephemeris, which is crucial for targeting and affects the inertial measuring accordingly. Combining and processing the information coming from the optical and inertial navigation systems, processing them through filtering and algorithms with the correct uh, operation will uh, yield the current position and velocity of the spacecraft. Then the current estimate gets sent to the solar sail gyroscopes as feedback to use it as a previous estimate during the next cycle to reduce the errors in calculation. Thank you. Now my team, Elida, will continue. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elida, and I'm going to talk about the history of solar sail technology and the elements of it. A solar sail propulsed spacecraft uses solar rays by striking a large reflective surface and providing momentum. It changes the momentum of the spacecraft and causes the spacecraft to move towards its target. One of the ways to achieve a momentum exchange is to use propellants, where some of the propellant mass is sacrificed. Due to the conservation of linear momentum, the spacecraft gains momentum equivalent to that of the lost propellant. And in 1975, NASA designed the first solar sail spacecraft. The purpose of this design was, the, was to visit Halley's Comet. The Planetary Society started working on solar sail spacecrafts in 1999, and in 2005, the spacecraft called Cosmos 1 failed to reach the orbit, thus the mission failed. In 2010, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency launched the world's first interplanetary solar sail spacecraft, Icarus, to Venus, which became the first successful solar sail flight. Then, Light Sail 1 was launched in 2015. The purpose of this mission was to fly test the Light Sail 2 and provide full control of the satellite systems. The results and data obtained in the Light Sail 1 program were used to make the Light Sail 2 program better and more advanced. The purpose of the light sail 2 is to determine the orientation of the solar sail relative to the sun and demonstrate solar sail propulsion. The Planetary Society acknowledged the light sail 2 mission as a success in 2019. The mission made major contributions to the development of solar sailing technology by demonstrating the CubeSat platform and controlled solar sail. To understand the pressure exerted on a solar sail, the best process is to start from the idealized case of a perfect reflector. Let us consider a photon incident perpendicularly on a sail. This photon will be reflected back opposite to the direction it arrived from so that its change of momentum will be as expressed in equation two. Therefore, if delta n photons per square meter strike the solar sail in a time delta t, the total momentum transferred to the sail in the unit time and unit area, which is the pressure and the total force on a sail of area or truss will be as shown in equation three. So the truss on a solar sail perpendicular to the radiation coming from will be as shown in equation four. Because this is inversely proportional to the distance squared, it can be factored out with the standard gravitational parameter which will yield to equation five. With the above effective gravitational parameter, we can write the conservation of energy at perihelion we have an initial speed V0 at a distance RP, whereas at infinity only the terminal kinetic energy is left. Then solving for V infinity will give the equation seven. Since the effective gravitational parameter is smaller than the standard gravitational parameter, this terminal cruise speed will be larger than the same quantity calculated as equation eight. Now Lena is going to continue presenting. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lena and I'm going to talk about the history of Apollo onboard guidance navigation and control and elements of autonomous optical navigation. 
On each Apollo mission, the command module's uh, optic system known as Space Excellence flew. It was a fail-safe navigation uh, system that ran independently of all other navigation systems and required no power to operate. The Navigation system, uh, the sextant was a key backup instrument that enabled the uh, sextant, the astronauts get back on track after being damaged by explosion and lightning strikes. The space sextant has two lines of sight, a scanning telescope with broad field of view, a space sextant with a 28 power small field of view. As a landmark, the astronauts utilize the scanning telescope to detect desired uh, stars or constellations. The space sextant has been used to operate the autonomous, autonomous navigation measurements by integrating two single axis gyroscopes and an accelerometer for angle and velocity change measurements. The other line of sight associated with the reference star was divided from the first and tilted away by articulating mirror, allowing the navigation angle to be recorded successfully in any plane. The intended measurement was the angle of tilt, the mirror uh, in normal section form, which was encoded for uh, use by the computer navigation and alignment algorithms. The section was employed with gimbal angles to orient the star line to the star uh, in the operation. The picture must be centered with the information required to realign the inertial unit. Throughout the mission, this guaranteed proper uh, inertial alignment. Despite the scared light issue, they experienced the uh, target. The scanning telescope proved it to be an effective tracking instrument for navigational studies of Earth and Moon in low orbit around these bodies. Briefly mentioning the elements of autonomous optical navigation, uh, figure on the left displays the geometric relationship between the spacecraft and the target object based on uh, line of sight direction information. To compute the navigation solution, it is necessary to know the angle between two asteroids and angle between the spacecraft and a known stellar field behind the asteroids where U is the vector from the spacecraft to a reference star. Obviously, more measurements would lead to better accuracy in navigation solution. Also, if camera has a large field of view, it may detect more than one line of sight, which will decrease the errors in attitude determination. Now, Hazal uh, will continue to finalize our presentation. Uh, since we know the uh, orbit of a certain asteroid, we can use that information to navigate the spacecraft where uh, a centroid is the determination of the position of the asteroid in the reference frame of the spacecraft. Um, below graphs uh, are, yeah, uh, are obtained from the Jupyter notebook provided uh, by our supervisor, which includes mathematical codes for um, synthetic, CC, synthetic CCD frame generation, point spread function, and centroiding. Um, we have a function describing an artificial star center, centered in the field, and assuming that each of the squares on the plot are pixels, what um, needs to be investigated is the amount of radiation that is going through each of those squares, uh, which we can calculate as a continuous number. And um, it's also managed by a Poisson distribution, which generates um, uh, random numbers out of that distribution, but still the um, average output will give the uh, expected result with the given intensity. If the star would appear as a point, all the light would fall inside of a pixel, whereas uh, it is spread out over, over several pixels, as we see in these figures. Um, since there is no atmosphere in the space, we are going to have a diffraction pattern where um, we, a wave crosses a boundary. In this case, uh, uh, the boundary is the camera lens. Then the uh, image of this plane wave is no longer a point, but a diffraction point that has a bright area at the center. Um, the graph on the middle displays the ideal image of the star came uh, out from the ideal distribution of the PSF based on statistics, but the CCD image produces the one we see on the right as a discontinuous function with integers and the center of the star produced by the CCD needs to be corrected to the ideal one. Since we have introduced ourselves into the field of autonomous navigation dur during our literature research, we are now aware of the state of the art of this time and technology. The most recent uh, mission plan to travel to a targeted asteroid is near Earth Asteroid Scout, which is going to be launched as a part of the uh, Artemis 1 mission. And it's going to be using ground-based navigation, not AutoNav. 
only the, the Space One mission has implemented autonomous navigation, but with ion propulsion engine. And not any solar sail propelled spacecraft travel to deep space. So uh, our motivation is, is to prove the concept of a combination of these two groundbreaking technologies, which are the future of interplanetary missions. Um, lastly, we would like to thank our supervisor, Dr. Pinto, for his guidance. Also, we gratefully acknowledge John Giorgini, uh, Mark Raymond, and Sian Paskaram from NASA JPL for very useful information uh, regarding the state of the art in autonomous navigation. Thank you for listening and um, thank you for your interest. Uh, great. I 